Right, hello everybody. We're back with James and the Giant Peach. And you may recall that when I last was reading to you, James and his crew of strange animals have fallen off the edge of the cliff, bounced into the sea, and they're now sailing away. And they're all feeling quite happy because they've escaped from the horrible aunt, Sponger and Spike, haven't they, Spike, haven't they? Uh, the peach seems to be sailing all right, so it feels safe. And they realised they've got plenty of food and drink because all they have to do is eat the fruit from the inside and that gives them all the food they want. And because the peach is really, really moist, it's full of, full, like full of water, that gives them all the drink they need as well. So it looks like they're going to be okay. Or are they? That's the thing about adventures, isn't it? Just when you think everything is going to be all okay, suddenly something goes a bit peculiar. Shall we see what happens? So at the end of the chapter it said, Everybody was feeling happy now. The sun was shining brightly out of a soft blue sky and the day was calm. The giant peach, with the sunlight glinting on its side, was like a massive golden ball sailing upon a silver sea. And that paints a really lovely picture, doesn't it? So, chapter 19. Look, cried the centipede, just as they were finishing their meal. Look at that funny thin black thing gliding through the water over there. What would be a strange black thing? Ooh. They all swung round to look. There are two of them, said Miss Spider. There are lots of them, said the ladybird. What are they? asked the earthworm, getting worried. No, they must be some kind of fish, said the old green grasshopper. but perhaps they've come along to say hello. They're sharks, cried the earthworm. I'll bet you anything you like that they are sharks and they've come along to eat us up. What absolute rot, the centipede said. But his voice seemed suddenly to become a little shaky, and he wasn't laughing. I am positive they are sharks, said the other. I just know they are sharks. And so, in fact, to fact did everybody else, but they were too frightened to admit it. And you can see, look, down the bottom, all around the bottom of the peach, what looked very much like to me, sharks. Now, I don't know if sharks eat peaches. Shall we find out? There was a short silence. They all peered down anxiously at the sharks, who were cruising slowly round and round the giant peach. Just assuming that they are sharks, the centipede said, uh, there still can't possibly be any danger if we stay up here. But even as he spoke, one of those thin black fins suddenly changed direction, boom, and came cutting swiftly through the water, right up to the side of the peach itself. The shark paused and stared up at the company with small, wicked, and probably hungry eyes. Go away, they shouted. Go away, you filthy beast. Slowly, almost lazily, the shark opened its mouth, which was big enough to have swallowed a pushchair with a baby in it. That's how big it was. And it made a lunge at the peach. They all watched aghast. And now... As though a signal from the leader, all the other sharks came swimming in towards the peach and they clustered around it and began to attack it furiously. There must have been 20 or 30 of them at least, all pushing and fighting and lashing their tails and churning the water into a froth. Panic and pandemonium broke out immediately on top of the peach. Oh, we are finished now, cried Miss Spider, wringing her feet. They will eat up the whole peach and then there'll be nothing left of us to stand in and, and then they'll start at us. Oh, she's right, shouted the ladybird. We're lost forever. No, I don't want to be eaten, wailed the earthworm. But they will take me first of all, because I am so fat and so juicy, and I have no bones. Is there nothing we can do, asked the ladybird, appealing to James. Surely you can think of a way out of this. Suddenly they were all looking at James. Think, begged Miss Spider. Think, James, think. Come on, said the centipede. Come on, James, there must be something we can do. And their eyes waited upon him, tense, anxious, pathetically hopeful. Do you see how he's gone, how quickly he's gone from being a small boy living with his horrible arms 
not knowing what to do. And suddenly it's like he's become the captain of the ship, isn't it? They're all looking to him and saying, what can we do? What, can he think of anything? I wonder. Chapter 20. There is something that I believe we might try. James Henry Trotter says, slowly, I'm, I'm not saying it'll work. Oh, tell us, cried the earthworm. Tell us quick. Uh, we'll try anything you say, said the sea, but hurry, hurry, hurry. Oh, be quiet and let the boy speak, said the lady, but go on, James. They all moved a little closer to him. There's a longish pause. Go on, they cried, finally, go on. And all the while they were waiting and they could hear the sharks thrashing around in the water below them. It was enough to make anyone frantic. They could eat the whole peach, couldn't they? Come on, James, the ladybird said, coaxing him. I'm afraid it's no good after all, James murmured, shaking his I'm terribly sorry, I forgot. We don't have any string. We need hundreds of yards of string to make this work. I wonder what his plan is. Hmm, well, where could he find string from? Actually, I think I know. Where might he get something that you could use as if it was string? What sort of string? asked the old green grasshopper sharply. Well, any sort, just as long as it's strong. But, my dear boy, that's exactly what we do have. We've got all you want. How? Where? The silkworm, cried the old green grasshopper. Didn't you ever notice the silkworm? She's still downstairs. She never moves. She just lies there, sleeping all day long. Or we can easily wake her up and make her spin. And what about me, may I ask, said Miss Spider. I can spin just as well as the silkworm. Huh, what's more, I can spin patterns. Well, can you make enough between you, asked James. Well, as much as you want. You quickly. Well, of course, of course. And would it be strong? Well, the strongest there is. It's as thick as your finger. But what, what are you going to do? Because spiders' webs are supposed to be incredibly strong. Because see how thin they are. I'm going to lift this pitch, peach clear out of the water, James announced firmly. You're mad, cried the earthworm. It's our only chance. The boy's crazy. He's joking. Go on, James, the lady busted Jenny. How are you going to do it? Sky hooks, I suppose, jeered the centipede. Seagulls, James answered calmly. Hmm. How do you can use seagulls, century? The place is full of them. Look up there. They looked up and saw a great mass of seagulls wheeling round and round. It's like when you go to the seaside, isn't it? There's seagulls everywhere. Watch out for your chips. They like to eat chips. They all looked up and saw a great mass of seagulls wheeling round and round in the sky. I'm going to take a long silk string, James went on. I'm going to loop one end of it around a seagull's neck. Then I'm going to tie the other end to the stem of the peach. He pointed to the peach stem, which was standing up like a short, short thick mast in the middle of the deck. Then I'm going to get another seagull and do the same thing again. And then another. And then another. Ridiculous, they shouted. Absurd. Poppycock. Balderdash. Madness. And the old green grass almost said, How can a few seagulls lift an enormous thing like this up into the air and all of us as well? It would take hundreds, thousands. Well, there's no shortage of seagulls, James asked. Look for yourself. We'll probably need 400, 500, 600... Maybe even a thousand, I don't know. I just simply go on hooking them up to the stem until we have enough to lift us. They'll be bound to lift us in the end. It's like balloons. You give someone enough balloons to hold, I mean really enough, and then up he goes. And a seagull has far more lifting power than a balloon because, of course, a seagull can fly, can't it? If only we have the time to do it. If only we're not sunk first by those awful sharks. You're absolutely off your head said the earthworm. How on earth do you propose to get a loop of string around a seagull's neck? I suppose you're going to fly up your sail yourself and catch it. The boy is dotty, said the centipede. Oh, let him finish, said the ladybird. She's always on James's side. I like her, don't you? Go on, James. How would you do it? With bait. Bait? What sort of bait? With a worm, of course. Seagulls love worms, didn't you know that? And luckily for us, we have here the biggest, fattest, pinkest, juiciest earthworm in the world. Of course they do, because they have 
a giant worm, don't they? You can stop right there, the earthworm said sharply. That's quite enough. Go on, the other said, begin to grow it. Go on. The seagulls have already spotted him, James. That's why there are so many of them circling round. But they daren't come down to get him while all the rest of us are standing here. So they said, stop, cried the other. Stop, stop, stop. I won't have it. I refuse. I, I, I. Oh, be quiet, said the centipede. Mind your own business. I like that. I think it is his business, isn't it? If he's going to eat my seagulls. My dear earthworm, you're going to be eaten anyway, so what difference does it make whether it's sharks or seagulls? I won't do it. Why don't we hear what the plan is first, said the old green grasshopper. I don't give a hoot what the plan is, cried the other. I am not going to be pecked to death by a bunch of seagulls. You will be a martyr, said the centipede. I shall respect you for the rest of my life. Oh, so will I, said Miss Spider, and your name will be in all the newspapers. Earthworm gives life to save friends. But he won't have to give his life, James told them. Now listen to me. This is what we'll do. Chapter 21. We just got time, I think. Why, it's absolutely brilliant, cried the old green grasshopper, when James had explained his plan. The boy's a genius, the centipede announced. Now I can keep my boots on after all. No, oh, I shall be pegged to death after all, wailed the poor earthworm. <coughs> Of course you won't. I will. I know I will. And I won't even be able to see them coming at me because I have no eyes. James went over and put an arm gently round the earthworm's shoulders. I won't let them touch you, he said. I promise I won't. But we've got to hurry. Look down there. There were more sharks than ever around the beach because that's what happens. When one shark finds something to eat, they seem to be able to send messages. Before you know it, there's dozens and dozens of sharks. The water was boiling with them. There must have been 90, 100 at least. And to the travellers up on top, it certainly seemed as though the peach was sinking lower and lower into the water. Action stations, James shouted. Jump to it. There's not a moment to lose. He was the captain now, and everyone knew it. They could do and would do whatever he told them. All hands below deck except Earthworm, he ordered. <coughs> yes, yes, they said eagerly as they scuttled in the tunnels. Come on, let's hurry. And you, centipede, James shouted. Hop downstairs and get that silkworm to work at once. Tell her to spin as she's never spun before. Our lives depend upon it. And the same place to you, Miss Spider. Hurry on down and start spinning. I'm going to stop just there. Do you think the plan will work? Or do you think the sharks will keep eating and the peach will sink lower and lower in the water until eventually they're all gobbled up? Come back next time and we'll see what happens. Be happy. Goodbye.